Okay, we've got to that stage. I'm now going to teach them how to mentally rehearse. They've never done it in a structured way. What would you do? How would you teach them to do it? What would you teach them to do? Well, we can't teach them everything at once. So, um, maybe I'm assuming now that the student understands the fundamentals of preparing their tennis racket and their balls or they are preparing a vessel to sail or whatever so and they understand the rule the rules so I make sure they understand all the rules and they come back to me and say they, I'll ask some questions do you understand the rules of the game here rules of the game there say so, okay what we can do is we can draw on the floor, so I'll just get a floor, get some little model boats or a big whiteboard and we say we're going to do a race, just you and me. And then we'll say the wind's from here, we'll do this, where are you going to start? And just practice the wind speeds this, you tack there, I'll tack here, practice, practice approaching marks and coming out of marks. So that's how I guess I would have done it. But I think nowadays, and I do know nowadays, we can actually simulate that on a computer. So I'd probably go to the e-game suppliers now that do, because I think World Sailing have e-championships where you can be on a PlayStation, I guess, on a computer, and I'm gonna be on a PlayStation on a computer, and I'd actually practice virtually racing with them. And that, I think that would be um, probably one of the best ways now. Just to get some principles in place and some thinking in place. And the next step would be, so that's getting the mechanics sorted out. But then the next step would be where we could maybe be somewhere quiet or walking along and saying, where we just discuss, say, hey, it's the two of us racing. We're going to do a championship in, I don't know, Lake Garda, Italy, the wind's going to be going 15 knots. You're coming in on starboard, I'm coming in on port, and we both tack together. And we're half a boat length apart. What are you going to do? And this is just discussing it in our minds. They say, okay, what are you going to do? I'm just about ahead of you. What are you going to do? Are you going to hike harder? Are you going to, or are you going to foot away a bit and get some more speed and try and get separation from me? Or are you going to try and push me up? Or do you want to slow down and tack, but I'll tack on top of you, so that's no good. So we'll just go through that in our minds and talk it through, just talk it through. Okay, you've footed away, you've tacked, you've got the first shift, you're ahead of me. That's great, we're coming into the mark, we're 100 metres from the mark. Are you going to tack on the lay line? Or are you going to tack before the lay line? And what are you going to do if I come and I'm on your transom and we go around the mark? Are you going to jive away? Are you going to stay that I can sit on your air? So it's just talk about and think about what we're going to do in that race, theoretically in our minds. My life and experiences were a videotape and I had a video editor on my desk in the workshop of my mind type thing. And there were you know, things that happened in your life that I didn't like. And I remember I'd cut them out and I'd cut them out and I'd put them in the bin and I'd cut it together. Or there were good things and I'd like to highlight them, um, but a, a negative thought came in and I didn't want that to control my thinking. I would consciously straight away go in there, cut, edit, bin it. No, we don't need that. We don't need that. And you look at someone who just is able to keep that cool in the most extreme moments and others who you know, that one shot loses them the, the tournament. That's the biggest challenge. Keeping your head. Rudyard Kipling trying to keep your head while all of us around you are going mad. <laughs> if you remember that poem, if that's the hardest thing to hold on, to keep that calm. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes the difference. Being able to get rid of negativity, your critic inside you, is extremely hard. We do love a lot of self-sabotage in our bodies, in our minds. I'm not good enough. He's better than me. 
maybe I haven't prepared enough. Oh, they've got better equipment than me. So we have to remove those things. No, I've got a good boat. Just bought the best going. I've got a mast made for me. This sail's a really good cut. I've done my training. I've been physically training now for six months. I'm in the best physical shape. We have to reaffirm to ourselves that yes, we're here and we're capable. And putting negative, we are limited by the positive thoughts and negative thoughts, yes. And getting rid of negative thoughts, I think I was saying before, putting a loss behind you, putting a failure behind you or whatever. I've done it twice in my life, major, with uh, financial losses in my family. So restarting is, or not getting things, let things in on top of you, is, they say it's more important to understand how to lose than to understand how to win. Through understanding that you have to lose, and there is loss, and that winning is not very common, that, you know, you don't see tennis players or sports stars who are on top of their game. You don't see how many years or decades of time they've put into their sport and the hours and the losses. All you see is the winning. And it's, um, yeah, I learned that you have a lot of disappointment, but you never give up and you keep positive. And you, I think one of the things you talked about with the bath and the water going away and renewing you, we do the same with a shower. <laughs> wash it away, you know, you know, wash it away. And after all, we're doing this for fun, aren't we? Right? This, there's nothing to lose. I certainly know one gold medalist thing, Kerry Quadas and Natalie Cook, going for Sydney 2000, they were very conscious of the end goal and their coach got them to visualise that end goal, standing on the podium, every day standing on the podium. They surrounded themselves with gold things, and, um, but they, they started with the end picture. I certainly know some athletes don't do that. In fact, they, they don't feel it's right for them to do that. They need to get today right and progress. In other words, they're doing a different thing. They're still visualising. But do you use that? that concept of seeing yourself crossing the line, feeling that, which some say is really important in this and others don't. Um, I've taken both strategies in my life. Yeah, I've taken both strategies. And I think for me, to want to win, either overall or to win my division, because we have age divisions or skill divisions, that has to be there. And you have to visualize that to get to there. However, you also as well have to, it's like the ego and the alter ego. You also have to balance you out and say, that's not the ultimate goal. It, you've got to win, but be prepared for loss. And don't be too overt about it. So you keep it within yourself, that desire to win. Keep it within yourself or within your team. Don't overexpress it, but within yourself and within the team, that is your focus. And that's what you work towards. That is what you visualize. Because it's no use, um, even with our small ocean boat out there, it's no use spending, you know, you go to the start line of a Sydney Hobart race, you know, you're a lot of money in already. So. No use starting, you're thinking, well, well I don't want to get a result. <laughs> so, yes, I think visualizing a result, it might not be number one, it could be number two, number three, but you go for number one and everything you work towards does that. So, just I think in 2003, when we got a, a second in the Sydney Hobart, I was already seeing the happiness on the owner's face because I was his sailing master. I was always seeing that and his pride of being able to get up on the podium. We were seeing that as we were racing. I was seeing that. 
both beforehand and during the race. And in fact, I could see that at the time we didn't have the communications we have now. We didn't know where other vessels were or anything. But I can remember we can do this and we, have, we were off Mariah Island and the wind behind is about 45 knots. It's very windy. And I see another yacht maybe half a mile away on our side and I go, shit, that's the winning boat in, or the, one of the fastest boats in the division above us. And I said to Tori, we can win this. And we popped the spinnaker when we didn't. And away we went. And we came around the Derwent. We were leading the whole race until about the finish line and we got second place. But, so that belief was there before the race, during the race. And it also drove decision making to take the boat just that little bit harder, to push the crew just that little bit harder. Because it's there, you can, you can see it. Some, uh, some races you don't, you don't see that, even how you visualise it. So even if you visualise it, it just doesn't happen. So I'm not quite sure whether it's a level of preparation in your mind. That's why I was saying to you at dinner the other night, I can spend 20, 30 hours in a week just thinking about a race. The more you think about it, the more you run through in the mind, the better chance you have. That's all. And the last question is, okay, if I'm just, if you're sitting down with a young person right now and they've obviously got talent, they want to do this, what's the, the key thing you're going to pass on to them? If you could leave them with one thing about their sporting career. So I think for sailing for me, anyhow, the more mature I've got, the better I've become at preparing and executing. When I was younger, it was more of a, a quick response and um, I didn't have much training or anything as a young person. So, And um, I've got the collective experience of decades of offshore sailing, as I said, of the America's Cup and being with the best athletes in the world. So I'm better prepared now. It, there is a depth of knowledge. Um, I forget the second question again, if you repeat if it. You're, if you're with a yeah, some a young sailors just come to spend some time with you, and they want to. Yeah, you know, they they're obviously they they really want to do something with their uh, with their sailing. With the, you've, and you've only got a couple of minutes with them. You know, is there any sort of advice? If there's one thing you can do, do this. I'd probably say there's two things they can do. One is get as much official training as you can. The second thing to do is pick a mentor. Pick somebody who you think can help you or somebody who's doing something you want and ask them for help. It could be anybody, it could be John Bertram as, or it could be in the sailing scene, it could be a guy from the local sailing club who does well, but find a partner to work with. Find somebody to share the load. Find somebody to pass the knowledge on. Find somebody who is prepared and is help you and believe in you. I, th I think that's my, that's my recommendation. That's what I think, is get somebody, enlist somebody who's prepared to help you and not necessarily for financial reward, but somebody who really has got some mentoring skills and somebody who really wants to help you. And that'll be a two way street because you'll have to help them help you as well. You know, you've got to get the effort, find them, get them to help you, and then continue to nurture that relationship, which will mean you putting a lot of effort in as well to get them to help you. It doesn't take much, you know. I remember being helped by one mentor, which is Sir Maurice Lang, and we were racing and I was steering his yacht. And I said, let's put the spinnaker up. It was windy in the Solent. He said, why would we do that, John? He said, everybody else is behind us. If we put the spinnaker up, they're going to put their spinnaker up and they might run us down. Ah. Another thing he told me, he said, he said, the best way to win a protest is not to be protested in a race. I said, what do you mean? He said, don't put yourself in a position where you can be protested. 
therefore you don't have to worry about being protested out of a race. So the, by teaming up with a mentor, you can get a lot of knowledge passed on to you young enough that that is like having everything I've done over the decades coming down quicker. So it's, I guess that's all I can say really on that matter. Get somebody who you admire, who's also got the ability, the time and the commitment to support you. You can't do it by yourself, I'm afraid. Not in our game anyhow, you need some help. Especially if you're young and you want to get ahead. Being young, you can work on the physical strength, you can work on the movements, you can work on power, you can work on a whole bunch of things. But at the end of the day, in, especially in yacht racing, it's about making decisions. So, you know, you're going to make the right decision at the right point, and by somebody passing that knowledge down to you, you you're already prepared for some things you've never been in before. You can say, hey, XYZ said I should do this at this point, and then it's up to you.